Hi, this is the second part uh, of the intro to t-test for difference in means. Um, in the first part, we uh, talked about why we use uh, t-tests, um, how we determine the type of test that that, um, that we need to use, because there are three types of t-tests. Um, uh, we talked about the null and the alternative hypothesis, um, how to determine the degrees of freedom for your test, and how to obtain your critical um, t-value for your test. So on this part we'll talk about step five in a, uh, a t-test and, and that one is calculating the t-statistic for your sample data. Um, so in this step you want to obtain the t-value for the difference in means. right? And the, the way you you obtain this depends on the type of test you're using. Uh, this is how you would obtain your t-statistic if you're using uh, a type 1 test for paired samples, where d is the difference in the matched sample, and this is the standard deviation for the difference, and this is divided by the square root of um, the sample size for the paired sample. Right? Um, or type 2 non-paired samples with equal variances, you would use this formula where x1 is the mean for group 1, sample, sample mean 1, um, and x, x, two bar, x bar 2 is uh, the sample mean for group 2. Um, in, a, in a type 3 non-paired samples with unequal variances, uh, you would use this this formula. Now, um, you are rarely going to do this by hand. Uh, thankfully, um, Excel will do this for you, and we'll discuss how you can how you can do it uh, in a, in a future video. But for now, it suffices to say that this is uh, the, the the way you calculate t is different uh, under different assumptions of, uh, of the data, um, especially between type 2 and type 3 tests, right? So assuming an equal variance, or assuming an unequal variance, would make a difference on not only your degrees of freedom, but also on your t, right? Uh, that's why this is so important, and as you will recall from the previous video, um, uh, we would like you to report the results of both tests. When they're not, when you find that yourself are, when you find that your samples are not matched, uh, report results for type two and type three tests. Okay. All right. So um, you will use Excel or other software for for calculating your t statistic. Um, but it's important that you remember, like I said um, a minute ago, that each test has a different formula for computing the t statistic. Now, once you've calculated your t, the statistic for your test, and um, once you've established your t critical value, right, you compare the t statistic you obtain to the critical value for your test. Right? Um, now, if the t statistic for your sample is larger than the critical value, you would reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypo hypothesis. If the t-statistic for your sample is equal or smaller than the critical value, then you cannot reject the null hypothesis right? or accept uh, the, the alternative hypothesis. Right? Um, now, you cannot reject the null and you cannot accept the alternative but also, and this is very important, when you cannot reject the null, you cannot accept it either. Right? When you cannot reject the null, you cannot accept it either. Right? So if the t statistic for your sample is equal or smaller than the critical value, you cannot accept your alternative hypothesis. You cannot reject it and you cannot accept it. Now, um, with your t-statistic, you can compute a t-value, right? 
and Excel, for example, will give you a, a p uh, will give you a p value instead of um, uh, of a t value in your test. So the p value is the probability of obtaining a t statistic as large as the one you did if the null hypothesis was true. Right? So if your p-value is smaller than the significance level, you can reject the null hypothesis. Right? But if your p-value is equal or larger than your significance level, you cannot reject the null hypothesis. And if you cannot reject it, you cannot accept it either. Right? So this is important. A p-value is the probability of obtaining a t-statistic as large as the one you did if the null hypothesis was true. Right? If that probability is very small, right, then you can reject the null. Right? If that probability is smaller than the significance level, in this case, if it's lower than 0.05, you can reject the null. But if it is equal or larger, you cannot reject. Okay? If your p-value is equal or larger, you cannot reject the null hypothesis. So, how would you, how would you write about a t-test that you did, um, let's say, in a report or, 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 in a, or in a paper, right? First of all, you have to tell the reader what test you, you used, right? Um, so an independent sample t-test, <coughs> assuming an equal variance was used to assess differences in average GPA between male and female respondents, right? You're given the, the reader information about what test you used. Then give the reader the sample results and then the results of the test so that they can see if the differences are significant in the population. Something like this. The average score for female respondents was this, right? That's the mean under standard deviation, was 2.1, um, was greater than the average score for male students, right? For male respondents. The mean for males was 18, and the standard deviation was this. This difference was statistically significant at the 0.05 level. 0.05 level. You're telling them that you performed the t-test, that this was your alpha level, right? And the t for this number of degrees of freedom was this. And the p-value associated with that t was lower than 0.01. Okay? Um, now, any, any p that is lower than if this, was, if this was your alpha, then any p that is lower than that, it will make it significant at the pi level. Uh, in this case, your p was lower than 0.01, so it, your, your test was significant at the, uh, at the 0.01 level as well. Okay? Now, what happens when you cannot reject the null? Right? If you cannot reject the null, you need to say it explicitly. Right? Um, so, you would say that the average score for female respondents was this, and the average score for male respondents was this, in the sample. This difference, however, was not statistically significant at the 0.05 level. Right? I did my t-test for these degrees of freedom, this was the value of my t-statistic in my test, and the p-value associated with that was higher than 0.05. So this result was not statistically significant. Right? When you don't reject a null, it means that you don't have enough evidence to say that the means are different in the population. Right? You see a small difference in the sample, but you cannot say that they are different in the population. You don't have enough evidence to say that they are uh, different in the population. And you cannot say that they are equal in the population either, right? Just that you have no, you don't have enough evidence suggesting that they are different. That's the only thing you learn from a test when you cannot reject an all. That you don't have enough evidence to say pretty much anything, right? Uh, when you reject, then you have evidence to say that they are different in the population. But when you don't reject, you don't have evidence to say anything, right? 
Now, in the next lecture and next videos, I'm going to show you how to do uh, t tests using Excel. And after we do that, after you uh, go through those lectures, you probably should come back to this one and 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 and, and, and review them. They'll hopefully make more sense than if they haven't already. Uh, thanks for watching.